Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. They're the one-stop shop where you can go online and build a mega website and run your very own business online. So today I'm doing a bike check on this dirt jump bike, which I've never done. And I'm doing it for lots of reasons, mainly because this channel, my YouTube channel has grown so much in the last couple of years. And I get a lot of questions and feedback that I don't really tap in enough to the kit that I use and why. Obviously my channel is super focused on learning new tricks, building jumps, riding them. The playground series has been massive, but this sort of stuff hasn't really had a look in for a while. So I'm going to answer a lot of those new questions from new people of what my bike is, what I run. So many people comment, what bike does Matt ride? As simple as that. But also those of you that have known my setup for a long time, this will probably surprise you with some changes and things. So first things first, most of you will know this, but the Marin Alcatraz frame is the foundation of this very dirt jump bike. Marin is a Californian mountain bike company. They're legendary. They've been around for years. And I designed the Alcatraz with Marin when I came on board the team about five years ago. It's an epic dirt jump bike. Everyone who's owned one, has ridden one, absolutely loves it. And I'll quickly explain why. So firstly, this 2022 one has a really cool paint job. It's black on that side. It's red on the other side. It's got this cool black and red paint splatter theme and a fade to black at the back. I love it. Obviously, it's a bit dirty. I'm up at Rushmere now. We're riding. We're getting clips for Hellfair. But, um, it's a beautiful bike and this year we've done internal cable routing so my brake hose goes inside the frame and back out there and that cleans up the look of the bike no end dirt jump bikes always have a hose or even a gyro on the outside of the tubes which i think doesn't look that clean so we've cleaned it right up it looks so sick but the geometry of the frame is the most important thing about the alcatraz so I had the opportunity to do whatever I wanted with this jump bike for myself, my personal needs, my goals at competitions, learning tricks, but also to build a bike that having played around with so many over the years, I thought brought together all the benefits and all the assets of what a dirt jump bike can be. So the main one for this is it's really short. It's short in the chain stay because you can see from how close the tire is to the seat tube there. And I could run it even closer. That's amazing. And similar to the front end, if I spin the wheels, the front wheel backwards, it shortens the bike because forks have an offset. Look at the gap there between the pedal and the tire. It's really, really short. So that's close to as short as you can make a dirt jump bike. And that's a massive benefit. It's an enormous benefit because it makes the bike more maneuverable and more agile. After all, it's a bike built for tricks. So for double backflips, 720s, to create rotations of a takeoff, a smaller wheelbase is such a big benefit. And this embodies that we've captured it and we've actually brought it to market. And for tricks, like lots of pro riders that ride this frame all around the world, feel the benefits of it. And I love that. I love the brand. I love what we've built. But the rest of the spec, I mean, we can start with suspension. This is fancy pants. Everyone loves what forks do you run? And they're fascinated by this because Erlins, it's pronounced, or Erlins. I think it's Erlins. I met a Swedish guy the other day. Really? Yeah, in Switzerland. <laughs> he said it's Erlins. And I said, I'm going to stick to calling it Erlins, mate. <laughs> He's like, fair enough. Um, they don't make a dirt jump fork, not specifically anyway. So we have to modify this. Brink sell a lot of Erlins forks. They're really, really good at working on them. Their service shop is superb. So we take a 650B, which is a 27 and a half inch wheel fork, and sh which has a longer axle to crown length than a 26 inch wheel because it needs to accommodate a bigger wheel. And we reduce the travel to make the axle to crown length the same. It has the same offsets. This is a short offset fork. So it, now it feels like a dirt jump bike. It actually has less travel than most dirt jump bikes. It has 85 mil or 90 mil rather than 100. But that's fine. You don't blow through 100 mil of travel when you land a jump because most of us run these things pretty rock hard anyway. Look at that. They hardly move. But they're really <laughs> plush. They ramp up and they're, I mean, they're not suspension, are they? I'm not using them to like soak up acorns but they provide so much support so when you hit that takeoff with loads and loads of speed you're not bottoming out you're not diving through travel that's what this bike's all about it's about being solid aluminium is a really really solid material for frames steel flex is more so that's rad so that's my olin's fork from brink and i love it it makes the whole bike look sick the decals were different i did have red sticker on that side and black no, it was red and white, wasn't it? To match the frame. But this fork is new and I was playing around with new settings, more pressure in it. It's, I've gone back to running a really, really hard fork and I'm loving it. So now I'm going to stick with this one. I'll probably swap the decals over. Um, my cockpit, we've got gusset, bar stem and grips, okay? So this is the gusset S2 set of handlebars. I've cut them down. This is the shortest I've run bars for years. They're 725 mil wide now. I've dropped that even more. I think it was 730 a few months ago. I used to run 770. So you think there's like 45 mil gone off this um, set of bars. That's so much, but it's really good for bar spins, having that clearance when you spin the bars, X ups. It actually feels really nice to kind of have my arms closer together. I don't know if it... That was someone's tire. That wow. was huge. <laughs> <laughs> days over i think it feels nice to actually stand up straight and then i run loads and loads of spaces underneath 
this is kind of counterintuitive to raise the stem even though gusset make a larger rise pair of bars i've gone for low rise because it looks cool they're cut down they've got a 35 mil clamp which means i can use an s2 stem and that's 33 mil long that's as short as you can buy a stem what that does is it keeps the center of the bars as much aligned with my forks and axle as possible which kind of reduces the amount of flop when you do bar spins if you made that longer and span it backwards that mass would be rocking back and forth so you can reduce that and make it all snappy these grips are s2 grips in like my signature colorway however this has been absolutely <laughs> playground playground modified it's like sand colored now but it should match this s2 dirt jump saddle which is pivotal I love that, it's got my signature on it. So that all matches, it matches the frame, it matches the bike. They're gonna be available in the coming months and I love all that stuff. So yeah, Gusset's my kind of components provider. Likewise with the pedals, they're the Gusset S2 pedals. I actually angle grind the pedal pins down now. I make them slightly less grippy. They're a super, super good grippy downhill pedal, but combined with 510 shoes, that, that grips too much for doing tail whips and tricks. You actually stick, so I grind the pins down is quite cool um, while we're down there let me just talk quickly about this chain ring that isn't a circle look at this that's an oval so that's made by absolute black they make oval chain rings which is really mind-bending to get your head around because look i'm single speed i've got one fixed length chain and yet that can grow and shrink constantly without snapping the chain which is wild but it can do that because the chain only goes around half of it, 50% of it. And the added teeth and reduction in teeth that kind of averages out around half the chain ring. The point of an oval chain ring is to iron out all the dead spots in a pedal stroke. So you can only actually put power down from about there to there when you're pedaling. It's less than half. So you get that little dead spot where you're not actually pedaling, you're not throwing your weight over and it irons that out. So it's like really linear at the back wheel rather than riding up a road and hearing ruh, ruh, ruh. it's more of a consistent thing. It's way better for climbing. Now you don't do any climbing on a dirt jump bike, but if you run an oval chain ring on your road bike, your enduro bike, your downhill bike, you're gonna feel it when you ride around one. So I run an oval on all my bikes and absolute black are the best in the game at making them. So that's not even a circle which is rad talking to circles if you've been circling around the idea of starting up your very own business and placing that online squarespace isn't just a great tool it's actually the one you need to run your very own business they have an amazing set of features to do that you can link your instagram account to it which most people have in the first place if they've got this amazing savvy business idea or problem solving solution and you can channel all of that into the website so they're your fans your viewers your customers and they can land there and you can measure how well that's performing there's also calendars for building and appointments you can choose and purchase your own domain name at the point of building the website you can do it all right there so i've got a link in my description below where you can start a 28 day free trial and when you're ready to launch you can save 10 percent off your very first purchase by using my discount code which is there as well moving back to my bike let's talk about circles even more my rims and wheels entirely are made by halo this is the halo chaos wheel set so chaos are the rims front and rear they're 26 inches they're quite narrow. You obviously run rim tape inside. I'm running inner tubes at the minute. I've ridden these rims. In fact, I've ridden for Halo. I'm 27 now since I was 12. So for 15 years, over half my life, I've ridden on for Halo. Every success story I've had have been on Halo wheels. They're like, it feels like it's in my DNA now, this sponsor, I love it. And this noise as well. That also like runs deep with me. That's the Halo <laughs> Super Drive hub. It's got 120 points of engagement the whole way around. Inside a hub, there's loads of teeth that engage, which is why you can pedal backwards. And then when you go to pedal forwards, it locks. There's 120 of those in that hub, which means every three degrees you get a point of engagement. That's why when you spin it, it's so loud because you're hearing it click through all of those. So Halo wheels have just been the best for me. I love that. The front hub is called a wide boy hub. It's not even got any mounts to attach a rotor so you can't run a front brake with this hub but what that means is by removing those mounts those six bolt mounts you can run a wider hub so this is really really wide and that makes a bigger triangle that side of that triangle with the spokes bigger so it's stiffer your spokes and your hub make a triangle the wider you make that the stronger you make the wheels so that's pretty cool and you definitely feel that with having all this all this bike is designed to be rigid and stiff that helps too so they're my wheels my tires are continental again obviously 26 inches they're both 2.2 inches wide the front is the race king tire that's got some nobbles on there i only really need grip on the front wheel when you're kind of carving around berms at competitions it's the only time you'll ever need grip other than that you're carving on wooden kickers really rock hard dirt landings you don't need a lot of grip on these bikes but if you do want it you need it on the front wheel 
and that means that I can run a Speed King on the back, which is pretty much slick. It almost looks bald. That is, I mean, they call it the Speed King for a reason. It's so fast. And I run 75 PSI in the back and 80 in the front. Really, really rock hard because I don't want them to move. I want them to be solid. I don't want to lose speed. I want this bike to be fast and it is that. So that's why I run really hard tires because grip, grip isn't a big deal at all. One really fancy part of this bike are the cranks. They're made by Cane Creek. They're the E-Wings crank. They're really, really cool because they're solid. They're not solid titanium, but they're titanium. It's a really expensive material. It's also immensely strong. They're way stronger than carbon fiber cranks and slightly lighter. But these ones are quite rare. They didn't make a lot of 165 mil ones. They're 165 mil long. Most cranks are 170 or 175, but a longer crank wouldn't work so well on this bike because of that clearance because of that gap between the pedal and the front wheel. If you make that 10 mil longer, you'll be touching. So you need short cranks, and that's also good to bring your feet closer together. When you spin, when you rotate on a bike, most people naturally do it towards their back foot because their hips are already open that way. To go the other way is awkward. So if you make your feet further and further apart, so you feel like you stood on a spirit level, it's almost hard. It's, it makes a difference. If I run 170 mil cranks, I feel it straight away. It feels like I'm stood way open, like spanning the Grand Canyon. <laughs> So they're really light, they're really strong, they're bling, they're super expensive, they're a thousand pounds for a pair of cranks, which is astronomical money, but I'm super lucky to have them, and a lot of people comment on them because they look so badass. So actually, they've been on three bikes. They like get part donored, they move between my bikes. Um, I don't know what my chain is, I usually run a gusset one, but this isn't. I've got a Cane Creek bottom bracket, a gusset headset, a gusset top cap, I've got a few titanium bolts in a few places. Those pink ones there, those gold ones, those rotor bolts, they're all titanium, which are half the weight of steel bolts. So it makes it all makes a difference, it all adds up. And my brake, I love this brake, that's the Shimano XTR four pot brake. So XTR was like more cross country years ago, it's super, super lightweight, but now it's just as strong and durable as the rest of the range really, but this is really bling, really lightweight. The lever looks lovely too. I actually run it really steep, like my finger's straight down on this bike. I think that's for when I catch bar spins, it comes round, bang straight in there see how i caught my jersey there that would have been a massive car crash <laughs> and i run a really long hose so i can do all of these bar spins look at that it wraps up that way around those spaces and it unwinds as you go if you do a decade or an opposite bar spin it wraps back up that's cool and it also has to be slightly longer too to accommodate for the internal cable routing going through the down tube not the top tube that distance is longer to go down and up than straight right so slightly longer hose this bike weighs shut right now with inner tubes not tubeless things like that a fraction over 10 kilograms which is seriously light for a bike that's down to the frame the forks the, these tires are light the, the um, cranks are super duper light so yeah i'm buzzing with that when i did a, the design and conquer project i got it down to 9.7 which is the lightest i've ever had a dirt jump bike and you feel those 300 grams honestly you really do but this is super durable i love this bike we're going to go and ride it now on the dirt jumps here get some hellfare picks so that's my bike check that was insanely in depth i know but a lot of people love that stuff. There's so many bike nerds out there and I'm one of them, which is why I know so much about my setup and why I've spent so many years honing it. And now I get to talk to you about it and now you know. So I won't do another bike check for a couple of years because I probably won't change it much. <laughs> so there we go. Keep it real, legends. Really nice to kind of have my arms closer together. I don't know if it... That was someone's tire. Wow. That was huge. 